Hello and welcome, I'm LJ and in this video I'm going to be looking at and answering the question why did Jesus pray for the cup to pass from him in the Garden of Gethsemane? Did Jesus really have a moment of weakness where he prayed to the Father that he might be spared from his impending death on the cross? Was the Messiah who was sent into the world that through his blood the world might be saved, who followed the Father's will doing all that he was shown, suddenly have a change of heart, even just for a moment? Did Jesus pray to the Father to save him from death, only to be told, no, you're going to have to go through with this? This would be the common consensus taught by basically every preacher I've ever heard on this subject. But something just doesn't add up. Something seems amiss. Let's have a look at the verses in question. If we start with the Gospel of Matthew, Matthew 26, 39. And he went a little further and fell on his face and prayed, saying, O oh my Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. Matthew 26, 42. He went away again the second time and prayed, saying, O oh my Father, if this cup may not pass away from me, except I drink it thy will be done. And Mark 14.35 And he went forward a little and fell on the ground and prayed that if it were possible the hour might pass from him. And he said, Abba, Father, all things are possible unto thee. Take away this cup from me. Nevertheless, not what I will, but what thou wilt. Luke 22.42 Saying, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. Now, at first glance, these verses do look like Jesus is indeed asking that the cup and the hour be taken away from him. But if the answer is yes, Jesus was asking for a way out from the cross, then we have some major theological and biblical problems to contend with. We have Jesus con contradicting himself when he himself says in John 1227 now is my soul troubled and what will i say father save me from this hour but for this cause came i unto this hour father glorify thy name then came there a voice from heaven saying i have both glorified it and will glorify it again he says he wouldn't say to father save me from the hour he states this was the very cause that he came for. It makes no sense that the Messiah, whose purpose was to die for the sins of the world, would go around preaching to his disciples that he must die, not that he will, but that he must, and then try to avoid the very act itself. Matthew 16.21 From that time forth began Jesus to show the disciples how that he must go to into Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and raised again the third day. When Peter rebuked him, saying that these things should not happen to him, Jesus responded to him by proclaiming that Peter's statement was from Satan himself. Matthew 22, 22. Then Peter took him and begun to rebuke him, saying, Be it far from thee, Lord, this shall not be unto thee. But he turned and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan, thou art an offence unto me, for thou savourest not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. It would be highly hypocritical of Jesus to rebuke Peter's words as those that came from Satan that his death shouldn't happen, only to then pray the very thing that he made claim was from Satan. Jesus stated that he had come to do the will of his Father and to finish his work. John 6, 38 For I come down from heaven, not to do mine own will, but the will of him that sent me. John four thirty four, Jesus saith unto them, my meat is to do the will of him that sent me, and to finish his work. He knew full well what was going to happen to him. Just before he was arrested, 
he went to those who had come to arrest him. John 18.4 Jesus, therefore, knowing all things that should come upon him, went forth and said unto them, Whom seek ye? Jesus had no need to pray that he would not die, because he was given complete free choice to do so or not. John 10.17 Therefore doth my Father love me, because I lay down my life, that I might take it again. No man take it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it again. This commandment have I received of my Father. Jesus himself was the one who would lay it down, and told his disciples how this was great love. John fifteen thirteen. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. He called himself the good shepherd, who would die for his sheep. John ten eleven. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. If God had spared him, would this not make Jesus a liar, having not given his life for his sheep? Jesus tells us that whatsoever we pray for, we will receive. Matthew 21, 22. And all things whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer, believing ye shall receive. John nine thirty one. Now we know that God heareth not sinners, but if any man be a worshipper of God, and doeth his will, him he heareth. If Jesus asked to be spared his death, and the answer was no, wouldn't this now go against his own teaching? Was Jesus a sinner, that God would not hear him? Or maybe Jesus just didn't really believe, but we know that he wasn't a sinner, and of course he believed. And we see later in Hebrews that his prayer was heard, Hebrews 5, 7. Who, in the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers and supplications with strong crying and tears unto him, unto him that was able to save him from death, and was heard in that he feared. A heard prayer is a prayer that is answered in the affirmative. Psalm sixty six nineteen, But verily God hath heard me, he hath attended to the voice of my prayer. So if his prayer was to be spared the cross and he was heard, why then did he end up on the cross? We see Jesus prayed to the one that was able to save him from death. If he prayed to be saved, was heard and still ended up on the cross, and died, then either the prayer wasn't heard, or God was unable to prevent it. And major problems come if we say either one of those is true. Jesus is the Lamb slain from the very foundation of the world. 1 Peter 1.20 Who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these times for you. Revelation 13, 8. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, whose names are not written in the book of the Lamb, slain from the foundation of the world. So Jesus praying that he would not have to go through with what has always been ordained of him seems like a pointless prayer, one that would contradict his own teachings one that would have devastating consequences if his request had been granted, and one that would have ultimately, Jesus would have known, would be futile. Jesus told his disciples to take up their own cross, Matthew sixteen twenty four. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself, and take up his cross, and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, and whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. Did Jesus ask them to deny themselves and then try to save his own life? He himself said if he did this, he would in fact lose it. The disciples who followed Jesus were all by, 
bar one, killed. We see when Stephen was stung to death, he prayed. Acts 7, 54. When they heard these things, they were cut to the heart, and they gnashed on the, him with their teeth. But he, being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up steadfastly into the heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing in the right hand of God and said, Behold, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. Then they cried out with a loud voice and stopped their ears and ran upon him with one accord and cast him out of the city and stoned him. And the witnessed laid down their clothes at a young man's feet, whose name was Saul. And they stoned Stephen, calling upon God and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And he kneeled down and cried with a loud voice, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. There is no mention of Stephen wavering as he met his doom. Was Stephen braver than Jesus? More steadfast in his faith in God than Jesus? The whole teaching that Jesus had doubt that he oscillated in is inconsistent with the Bible. So how do we reconcile clear passages that show Jesus asking for the cup to pass from him with these seemingly contradictory passages that we have just seen? We are faced with two choices. Either the Bible is incorrect or the interpretation of the Bible is incorrect. So we need to ask, is the Bible incorrect? My answer to that is no. If your answer is yes, then I guess the rest of this answer is not for you. If it isn't a problem with the Bible, then it must be the interpretation that is wrong. The problem arises due to the prayer of Jesus being misunderstood. And this is due to the simple misunderstanding of what cup Jesus is referring to and what pass from me means. It is most commonly believed that Jesus is talking about the cup of the wrath of God, which people believe God pours out on him on the cross. And see my video on why did Jesus die for a better explanation on that. Jesus is asking that he be spared from God's wrath and that it be removed, as in he doesn't have to have it. But these are the two mistakes the two misunderstandings on which the wrong interpretation is drawn. We have already seen that Jesus knew the hour was coming and that this was his purpose. We also have seen that Jesus stated himself that he wouldn't ask to be spared from the hour. In order to get the correct answer, we just need to understand the cup Jesus is referencing and what pass from me actually means. Jesus is not asking that the cup of the wrath of God be removed at all. Jesus is talking about the cup of the new covenant. The cup that he had shared with his disciples only hours before his praying in the garden. Matthew 26, 27. And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it, for this is my blood of the New Testament which is shed for many for the remission of sins. Jesus was praying that this cup be passed from him. Now the true meaning of this is that it might be passed from him onto others for them to drink. The cup that Jesus drank from during the Last Supper was a communal cup and each person would drink then pass on the cup to the next person. Obviously, it would be difficult for two people to drink at the same time. So each person would take a turn in drinking from the cup and then pass it on from them to the next person. Jesus' prayer is that he is ready to pass on the cup of the new covenant, which as we know is the blood of Jesus. He cannot pass it on. Nobody can drink from it because it is not yet full. His blood has not yet been shed. Jesus is stating his readiness to pass on the cup. Let's look at the prayer again. Matthew 26, 39. 
And he went a little further and fell on his face, praying, saying, O oh, my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. Jesus' statement that not his will, but the Father's, is simply Jesus saying, I have fulfilled all that I have been asked to do, except die. But if the Father has anything left for me to do, then not my will be done, which would be that I now die and fulfill all that I have come to do, but the Father's will. Jesus' will is ready if the Father's is also. If it's possible, let this now be the time to pass on the cup. His prayer is not that he be spared, but that this was now his time. We see in the Gospel of Luke that an angel comes to Jesus, and there appeared an angel unto him from heaven, strengthening him. Now this is the answer to Jesus' prayer, that the Father's will was that all was complete and he is also ready. Strengthen him, him that he knew his wait was now over, that there was no more to be done than his death. Jesus' second prayer, Matthew twenty six forty two, and he went away again the second time and prayed, saying, O my Father, if this cup may not pass away from me, except I drink it, thy will be done. It is the confirmation that he must drink of the blood first in order to pass on the cup to the world. But that he cannot pass away the cup until he drinks it of himself. But he can't drink it until it is filled. And therefore his blood has to be shed. Again stating if the father's will should have him do so now, then let it be so. In Mark, we see that Jesus uses the term, the hour might pass from him, which is not a literal hour, but a reference to a period of time. And Mark 14.35, And he went forward a little and fell on the ground and prayed that, if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. And he said, Abba, Father, all things are possible unto thee. Take away this cup from me, nevertheless, not what I will, but what thou wilt. The hour is an hour of glorification, not suffering. The hour of the Son of Man. John twelve twenty three, And Jesus answered them, saying, The hour is come, that the Son of Man should be glorified. Verily, verily, I say unto ye, Except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. He that loveth his life shall lose it, and he that hateth his life in this world shall keep it unto life eternal. Jesus is clearly affirming to the disciples that the hour in which he is glorified is the hour in which he dies. Again, Jesus said the hour was about glorification, uh, glorifying him and the Father. John 17, 1. These words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy son, that thy son may glorify thee. When Jesus is saying, let the hour pass from him, he is saying, let this be the hour. I'm ready. Let's get this over and done with. The hour is something that is part of the Son of God. Something that Jesus knew all along, as we have already seen. It's like, if you have an assignment to do, you might say, I wish this assignment was already over and done with. You know that the assignment won't pass away until it is completed. Jesus knows what his assignment is. And he is now ready to go through with it and is praying not that it pass him by but that the assignment pass from him meaning the assignment be done and therefore is no longer needs to be done and so it is gone from him it is passed away from him the prayer that jesus prayed was that the hour was now 
that it was his time to be glorified. He had confirmation from the angel that it was. And so, after his third prayer, Jesus returns to his disciples and declares that it is indeed the hour. Mark fourteen forty one, And he cometh the third at time, and saith unto them, Sleep on now, and take your rest. It is enough. The hour is come. Behold, the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. We then see more affirmation that Jesus was not wavering when Peter strikes a guard. Matthew 26, 51. And behold, one of them which were with Jesus stretched out his hand and drew his sword and struck a servant of the high priest and smote off his ear. Then said Jesus unto him, Put up again thy sword into his place, for all they that take the sword shall perish with the sword. Thinkest thou that I cannot now pray to the Father, and he shall pres presently give me more than twelve legions of angels? Jesus clearly stating that if he wanted to pray for it all to stop, that he could at any point, and his Father would send armies to defend him, which would in fact have been a lie if he had just prayed that very prayer and the Father had said no. Again, he makes it perfectly clear that he is to drink the cup. John 10.10 10. Then Simon Peter, having a sword drew and smote the high priest's servant and cut off his right ear, the servant's name was Malchus. Then said Jesus unto Peter, Put up thy sword into its sheath. The cup which my father hath given me, shall I not drink it? Again, that would be quite hypocritical of Jesus if he is having a go at Peter for something that he's just prayed to uh, avoid. He then again affirms the need for him to die in order that all be fulfilled. In Matthew twenty six fifty four. But that how then shall the scriptures be fulfilled, that this it must be? Jesus never falters from his task. He never hesitates. He never once doubts the Father, even for a moment. Never asks to be spared from the cross. He knew exactly what he was here to do. He knew exactly what was going to happen. Jesus did it freely. Jesus did it willingly, and Jesus did it for you. Thank you very much for listening. I hope this has been useful and informative. If you have any comments, please leave them on Facebook or YouTube, or send me a message through email. Thank you again for listening. God bless.